somewhere in the early 1860s, uh, my great grandfather came to California and met his wife, uh, actually in Dublin, California. It's, it's in the Bay Area. And uh, they had some connections down here and he would travel to LA or down the El Camino Real back then. And he uh, first uh, raised sheep, because that's what they do in Ireland, grow potatoes and raise sheep, for the 49ers, uh, the, the, gold, the gold era of California. Um, but he saved enough money and knew he wanted to buy land and start farming. So um, in his travels up and down California, the tallest mustard plant that he saw off the horse trail, El Camino Real, was here in Oxnard. And he said, well, that's where the tallest mustard grows. It must be the best farmland. And he was right. My father never forced any of us, but we kind of all uh, knew that when we got out of eighth grade and into high school that we were uh, indentured servants in the summertime. <laughs> we would uh, hoe lima beans, and the hoe in lima beans was what you did uh, when this was the lima bean capital of the world. There was no discussion. You were gonna help out on the farm. And then when we all got into college, and it was the 60s and 70s, a lot of us did other things. Uh, I had a couple other jobs before uh, officially going to Cal Poly, getting my ag degree, coming back here and working with my dad. Once you do other things, you kind of figure out, wow, farming's not so bad, kind of cool. And uh, it, yeah, you know, just having the legacy and the farmland was, so it was, it was great to start farming. And I started, got it out of uh, Cal Poly in 1978. United celebrating its 90th anniversary. That means they started in 1927. And I think it was called something else back then, but I've read that they actually diverted water then all the way here to a little community called Springville, which used to be a part of our ranch. It was for the community and for farming purposes because there was already, I mean, we didn't have pumps back then. Um, so it was uh, probably a little canal that people would splice off and use water. And uh, I think it was concrete back then, but it was open. I don't think it was underground. And that was in 1927. So the Freeman Diversion, which was I think in 1995, I remember being approached by the state of California in the late 80s. And it wasn't a happy subject. They were saying, look, we're gonna sue you because you're pumping so much water that all the salt water is coming in. They did 20 year studies. Or we'll give you $10 million and you can come up with $10 million and we'll put a $20 million water project together. That's how I remember it. I hope I'm close to how it happened. Water is the great equalizer. Uh, out of everything that SOAR tried to do, out of all the farmers I know that are, you know, just looking for another way to diversify um, and make money, water is going to humble us all. We can't blame a politician. We can't blame uh, some type of regulation. Water is what is going to make us all become sustainable. We're talking about a problem that we start, we love this, the Oxnard Plain is basically 40,000 acres and I heard the first accounts of seawater intrusion were actually in 1949. I mean, I wasn't even born yet and they were having seawater intrusion. So they were pumping so much water out there, seawater's coming in. I get it. We need to talk and honestly the Freeman diversion and uh, drip irrigation and every other thing we have going for us are still temporary solutions. Water is really what United is all about and United has been such a saving grace in the long run. They, I, I love United because they look at bigger, bigger pictures. Maybe we need desol plants, maybe we need uh, other crops. I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but all of these 
have worked for a while and then you get a drought and then you go, oh yeah, I forgot, we don't, we're not in charge. So we got to look at sustainability in a much bigger, bigger light and it includes so much. But water's great because we can't blame anybody. United is in the forefront of of water policy and what we can do and what we're capable of. Because I've heard people come from all over the world to see the Freeman Diversion. It's a model for uh, water plans everywhere. And that's what I, I, I completely respect what United stands for.